but these are your two comps. Um, do you think you're leaning any particular way? Oh, so you me, I love Zach. But with the rest of this Zach comp, I don't really see many divers with him, right? That's the thing. He's kind of isolated in terms of him jumping. And at this point, he's kind of buying space for the rest of his team. That being said, though, it is ground zero. They are on comfort champions. Kisei on this chase is prolific uh, with what he has been able to accomplish, just kind of running the map by himself when he gets a good game on this champion. So, look, I'd say it's close, but I'm erring in favor of ground zero here. Well, let's see then if they can get the job done, complete business, and uh, speed run through this best of two. It certainly was a uh, very quick night last night with our two series being done, uh, or both matches being done in under 30 minutes. Let's see if this follows Minions suit as well. But for Ion, I think, once again, I am putting a massive beacon of hope in towards this mid lane, right? As much as we know that Kise is phenomenal as the Jason, played a whole bunch of it last season. You know, Shobi's impressed us with a lot of what he's shown too. And Nico, a brand new champion, I'm keen to see what shenanigans he can pull off, especially pretending to be minions. I mean, that's the thing. He absolutely has impressed so far and has even drawn the respect from Kisei to buy the Doran shield level one as opposed to a longsword or a Doran's blade. So Kisei is certainly aware of the poke that a Nico in lane can offer, especially with that airy, right? You're going to be constantly getting harassed. You're going to be constantly proccing that Doran shield. So a pretty high value, especially if you can switch into that melee form. Whoa. Can't lay notes, we're getting aggressive, level 1, we're not even playing for level 2 just yet, but Benthi's copped an Ignite, x flash has gone in, he's going to get slowed for a very long time, he's going to cop it in the eye of his own, lose his vision, as he flashes to safety, and now bot lane is a prime position for these junglers to look at. Yeah, absolutely, we talked about burning flashes earlier, and before level 2 even kits over, that is going to be the case, however, Skimmy, importantly, Ground Zero are the ones that retain wave control, and now it is very hard for Ion's bot lane to actually make anything happen until their jungler comes down, right? All Shenfine needs to do is make sure he's on the map at the same time as Foreigner is towards this bot lane, and then they'll easily win the 3v3 because of that wave advantage, because of that health advantage as well, oh. and Nebula is not having a good go of things right now. It is just brutal as you're speaking. I'm just watching Lemus take his absolute idle time here, last hitting whenever required, and just posturing in the lane. Not really allowing him to do much at all and actually forcing him back to base. They're building up a massive wave here. Yeah, fortunately for Ion, Nebula should be able to get back in time for most of these minions because he does have the cannon there to tank the turret. However, Shernfire, full HP, just going to force off this level 1 Rakan from even getting the experience under his own turret. So brutal. And I think, yeah, as Shenfire, now you know how strong your bot lane is. You can afford just to walk in, even on Vision, and say, we can take these camps. So I can just idle here. And what can you do? You cannot step up to that wave because you will just die like this. He's just come back. And he's already down to 60%. Importantly, he will be able to actually get past this initial ambush and collect some XP under the turret for and actually jumps into Lemus. He certainly does. The knockup goes there, but Lemus flashes out the second knockback as, uh, well, X flash down was a lot of trouble. He looked for that kill, but he's the one to receive the first blood on his own head. It's actually drawn the attention of Jovi to rotate from mid to bot. That's how long this little fight has uh, gone on for, but the root connection fire is the focus. Just out of range of the Zinza to connect as well. And this fight is going on for far too long right now that Lemus has resigned himself to the afterlife. So it will be a one for one, but all that time, Ion are losing the CS under their turret. So even though the kills are even, you can look at the CS department and the experience department, Ground Zero are very far ahead. But simply, the issue is, it's just a matter of experience. And I'm talking the in-game version here. It's level three bot lane compared to a level one. You could see Benby lands the initial route and chunks Nebula out to half HP before he even gets to his turret. So sure, Foreigner arrives, but what, what backup does he actually have, right? This is a Rakan and Zaya who have one spell each compared to the level three bot lane from Ground Zero. So Hexflash dies immediately and crucially, Chovy, Jovi roams here to be able to secure the trade. Without that, it would have been a complete disaster. It certainly would have been. It would have been a, uh, an unchecked uh, bit of aggression that would have favoured Grand Zero and would have gone really um, uh, script in terms of the early aggression that Grand Zero have been famed for. But it's a nice way for him to answer back and especially punish by taking out Lemus in particular. We'll check it in with the overall CS as a result. And after all that comes crashing down, you can see that there is a uh, fairly substantial difference between the two of them. Double, in fact, for Lemus here. So expect bot lane still to be a bit of a focus whilst these flashes are unavailable. Yeah, absolutely will be. You can see Shernfire as well starting his jungle path up on the top side here, right? So there always is a possibility that he can either finish this, go to Grubs, or he can path back down. You see the pings and the movement of Foreigner now. He's posturing towards this early objective because of the priority that he will have in his top lane and mid lane. So if we are seeing a trade, there is a potential for a redive uh, with this Poppy. 
once we get a chance to check in with the top lane as well. Worth noting that Dorimon is running the Ignite, and that's what he's going to pop right now. Look at try and pop the passive of that Zac, but he's just going to get underneath the tower. Now, we saw this happen the other day, and the kill still managed to come across as they all join together, but I think this time, just a little bit too close to that one. He'll be fine here, Steve. The junglers have found each other. They certainly have, and it's going to be uh, Schoenfire picking up the first grub. But Foreign will say, well, you get one, I'll get the second. Nobody at this stage is not going to try and help and intervene. Still stuck in their lanes. And um, still forced to do what they do best, which is fighting things out. Tien's already burnt that TP, so his health bar blinking low. Not too keen, especially with that passive missing now. Yeah, that's the crucial thing here, right? It's just Ion Solo Laners both have pressure to move first, right? You can see you don't want to fight a Rumble Equalizer as a Poppy without Flash in that mid lane. But speaking of fighting, bot lane's going at it. We're going at it again. Start off at level one. It continues now at level four. This time, Lemus gets the kill on towards Nebula. And in the mid lane, we're still going for more. In comes Schoenfire looking for the 2v2. And they're winning out on this fight as well. But they turn it around. Then the Shock Blast completely faults the players that fall ahead. It's really close fights in either lane, but Ground Zero come out ahead on both fronts there. We'd have to see what happened in that bot lane, but it looks like the Ion members just got a little bit overconfident there. As Jovi is staying on lane, he is pretty low health, despite what that Zaya health bar will have you believe. He misses though, so no kill to be found. So he was looking, and uh, you wouldn't um, put a past him to find a kill in a sketchy situation like that, but I think both mid laners would be quite happy just to go back to base. Kisei does still have that luxury, of a TP to use, but let's check in with how it all uh, took place in bot. So Ion kind of acknowledging that if they let this wave play out, they're going to get harassed on the turret. So Hexflash goes for the engage, but all the while that they're hitting Benvy, Lemus is just DPSing Nebula, and that's a serrated Dirk Barris who has his passive on minions prop. So he's got quite a lot of attack speed and the damage to boot. So the second that happens, he ends up falling down. And meanwhile, just a shock blast to the face for Foreigner. Yeah, absolutely zapped into oblivion there. But you see in the bot lane, as you quite rightly point out, Lemus three hitting and AD carry, given all that time and space, uh, never a good sign. Obviously, the dream situation for them, and certainly is when you're building all this lethality with that Halo Blade spec. So they're going to be sitting pretty, uh, pretty comfortable in this lane. They were built to do one thing: be aggressive, find kills, and that's where the majority of the action's already been in these uh, first eight minutes. Out comes the Chenna Corruptions, because guess what? They're already level six, and they get Nebula again. Oh, what a disaster, and the dragon to insult, uh, to injury. That's huge. It's really the terrain there that favors Benvy, who's able to walk in very aggressively on towards Nebula, who crucially doesn't have cleanse. That's going to land me to get caught out as Schoenfly has found Jovi. He certainly has. Fantastic flash charge into the water, hit the stun, but a good flash afterwards from Jovi denies that one from coming on through. So flash advantage now in the mid lane for Kisse. And for all the priority that they've had in their solo lanes, it's all starting to come uh, crumbling down. Crumbling down, especially these plates in the bot lane. Three already going over to Lemus. Up almost double, actually is double, the CS of Nebula. However, they are sitting on a ward here. I wonder if they'll be able to get collapsed upon. Yeah, we we'll don't know now. But the ground, they'll know now. But the ground zero bot lane, you can see just no hesitation to constantly shut these waves. They have their jungler here too, who's also level six. Oh, shit, go, absolute madman. The sweeper clears and he just hex flashes into it without a care in the world. He knows. He knows how strong their bot lane is right now. And why would you put it past him? A 3 and one Varus already with a bounty. I mean, at this point, you wouldn't put it past him to actually just try and take the tower in this, uh, in this one push. Keep in mind, Rakan should be decently close to six and does have the flash available. Jovi's walking down as well. So if Ground Zero do overstay their welcome, there could be a window that they get collapsed upon. However, you can see there that they're so respectful. Shurnfire is hovering at all the right times to dissuade any potential gank, because there's a Chains of Corruption. And a Corruption once again, but the arrow just agonizingly missing for that lethal amount of damage. Oh, Shurnfire sure. underneath the turret with the passive coming on through. Benvi committing a flash to get that kill to make sure they would, in fact, find what they're after. And I tell you what, Nebula's life really is um, not taken kindly to this game. Three deaths in under 10 minutes. Yeah, a bit of a misplay there from Schoenfire as Foreigner could potentially look. He has flash, but Lemus has it of his own, so I don't think he'll actually amount to much here. He'll burn. Summoner Heal comes out. The fear really turns around that three-point strike, and then the damage is so much so that the unending despair is enough to say, hang on a minute, we can kill you. There's the slow, there's the reveal. You won't get denied by running out of that uh, vision. So they flash, oh. and they pounce, and they quite honestly just destroyed. That should have been a double. Yeah, Foreigner getting it. Overcaught, overconfident there, gets baited by the low HP bars of Ground Zero. However, the heal in response, all the damage coming out from this Huey, who is really proving to be a menace. 
Ground Zero, when are they actually going to reset? <laughs> he must be sitting on so much gold. I'd love to see when he goes back to base to pick up right now because with the Serrated Dirk, a couple of swords and a tier ready to build on up, he's oh, already wow. got 5,000. Unbelievable. He's double the gold of Nebula right now at this point. He is insanely scaled for this game. Like you said, he's going to come back, definitely have at least one item, potentially looking at the Yomu's um, pickup in base. But, you know, as soon as I say that, of course, why, why would you miss any CS if you're Lemus? <laughs> no, he wants to make sure that he's 10 CS per minute, keeping it on pace, and uh, really trying to have a better battle with uh, Kisse. Because, uh, look, individually, CS-wise, he's doing a phenomenal job as well. He's not found as much action as he would have liked otherwise. You can see Tien here. Honestly, I think he's holding his own. He's, he's been battered a fair bit. His HP bar every single time we check in has been fairly low, and you can understand that being the case for, what, being 40 CS down. Yeah, I mean, speaking of individual performances, I mean, we've spent so much time in the bot lane that we haven't really had a chance to check in on the other lanes, but Benvi, oh, that blast cone. That was clutch. That probably was the best blast cone you could hope for there. Otherwise, he really was the sitting duck. Yeah, that would have been a much-needed kill going back to Ion, but... Back to my previous point about Doraemon, he's actually carved out quite a nice CS lead for himself in this top lane, right? You can see he's up about 30 now once these waves are all said and done. So it's, it'll be up to this Rumble to see what he can get done versus Avaris, right? Because when Lemus doesn't have Flash, he is quite vulnerable to this Rumble. So if he's able to get involved early, if he's able to come down and potentially bail out his bot lane, that could be what Ion need. But well, he certainly needs something at this point because the bot lane has uh, been drowned out to uh, irrelevance oh, at this no. point. It seems so sad to say, but they've not been able to find any success at all. And you're kind of banking your bets on either Jovi or Doraemon being the ones to try and turn things around. They have to be the carry. Yeah, they have to carry, but it's so hard at this point when your entire jungle is controlled by the enemy bot lane. You can see Shurnfire's here. There are ultimates available. We're on. The Yomus is there. There is the Ghost Blade, and there is the Shrelias. They've got movement speed, they've got damage, and they've got kill pressure to bring it all crumbling down. The last action Nebuli could do was rip back the Feather's Root Shurn under the tower, but the tower gets destroyed. There is that first one, and there is the chance to hit the Pop Blossom, but it's only on to one. Is that the kill they're after? That might be the kill they'll have to take. They miss! The grand entrance onto Benvi, they punish Fauna for the second time on a row again. Again, Hex oh. Flash with a panic flash after. What a mouthful that was. Oh, it is just an absolute disaster for Ion in the bot lane. You can see that they want to dissuade the initial dive, but there's just too much damage coming through, right? You can see with all the poke that lands, Nebula's half HP before he even gets to cast his Featherstorm. Let's take a look at it again. So the turret's very low. You can see Lima starts by throwing the Chains of Corruption. Non-committal form of engage, and that piercing arrow basically kills Nebula before the fight even starts. It's brutal at this point. I mean, just take a quick stock check of this. It's like, play safe under tower. Good luck playing safe with that one. It's just not possible yeah. to stay. But Fauna's, I mean, for such a strong champion, I feel like he's almost overestimated how strong he is because he runs in full HP and he's just gone. Yeah, I mean, what's crucial there is the Keeper's Verdict onto Jovi, right? If he's able to go forwards as well, keep DPSing onto Benvi, yeah. there's a world in which that's a trade kill, right? Then Xin Zhao can jump in, use the ultimate to buy himself space, but Benvi has just been unrelenting onto Nebula, no? Yeah, he certainly has been. They say, you know what, let's shed a love elsewhere. I've made my AD carry, absolutely fed. I'll be a babysitter in the mid lane now, Mr. Kisse. Let's get you on the action board as well. He's not a fan of kill just yet. Three assists to his name. But when you take stock of jungle and your bot lane, oh. you'd be feeling pretty happy about your chances in this one. I mean, look at the range at which Ion is still able to get hit by spells, right? You can see this, the W from Benvi there as he's found out. Certainly has been found out. Another clutch flash. If it's not a blast cone, it's a flash ready to use. Yep, and he's fine. All continues as usual. Runs towards his mid lane, taking turrets basically everywhere they put their bot lane, right? You can see that the Rift Held has just spawned, so this is likely where Ground Zero are wanting to direct their attention next, but just not leaving any room really for Ion to come back in. You can see that the poke is constantly keeping them low HP on the turret, and Varus has backed, completed his second item at just 14 minutes into the game. Yeah, once upon a time we'd be highlighting in uh, the last season, right, that you know you get a mythic at 12 minutes in, you've won the game, you've snowballed out of control. That's two done at 14 minutes. It's um, quite unfathomable, really, here, as they've already got themselves a 5k gold lead, and it makes it incredibly hard now, not only based on the fact that their bot lane is fed, but that Foreman has been put so far behind, he can't even contest Shurn Fire Fleet's objectives now. Yeah, this is not a Jin Zhao who's living for very long at all. He just jumps in and dies basically instantly unless he's able to pop that ultimate. So it will be the Rift Herald that's in the sights of Ground Zero. You can see Doraemon potentially wanting to look for something, but the rest of his team is just so far behind as Tien. 
Getting a little bit feisty here. Oh. But Raymond with the fancy feet. He does have some good feet on him, doesn't he? Missed the slappy hands. We'll not bring him together on this occasion here, and there will be no punish. It's not going to stop Grand Zero being aggressive. Schoenfire left to his own devices to pick that one up on his own. But the rest of the team grouping up, running around this top side of the map and making sure let's find that third all important outer and really complete the Exodia when it comes to vision control. Yeah, it's what they're looking for right now. You can see they've shifted Lemus down towards this mid lane to be able to get a push going into Nebula, who he really does not need to worry about in a 1v1 sense. Meanwhile, Jovi is pushing on the bot lane, trying to get some gold back into their pockets. As we can see, Schoenfire drifting around the map. He actually ran into the wall skimming. Yep, we saw that. But look, you know what? We don't TP. need to worry about it because this could be the moment Iron looks to try and answer back into this game. In comes Jovi. There goes the equalizer. Not the best one, quite honestly, but a pop blossom to knock it up too. And they get burnt alive. There's one shut down. Maybe they can find his second. And they've both gone to Dorimon. That's their best case scenario. Exactly what you needed. And they've won it off in this occasion. Shurnfire will luckily escape after proccing the phase rush, but that was such a well-timed play from Ion. You can see that the second that Ion sees Tien cast that TP on the bot lane turret, Jovi pulls the trigger. He knows that it's his time. He doesn't even have to use flash, right? Just by virtue of his good positioning, he's able to find those kills there. Oh, as the chain of corruption will narrowly miss, but oh, that Q damage. If that chain of corruption had hit on vision, would have been a bit of a crime, quite honestly. But uh, look, I think Nebula's Probably thinking at this point, am I even worth any gold, unfortunately? 0 and 5 in this game, really rough affair for the Zyra Khan combo, not being able to find their level of stability they would have been hoping for. But out of the bush, there comes the fear. Way being a bit of a nuisance here as Benvy hits him with the ultimate, reveals him, and slows him down in the process. A knock up to the head, and a third kill for the support mage. It's a slow kill, but it's a kill nonetheless. You can see that Ion's own jungle isn't even safe for them at this point with how much mid-priority they're bleeding, right? Jovi is around, but really your most fed member, Doraemon, is not even on the same side of the map as you. So Ground Zero just have complete confidence to continue pushing these waves with not, not even a care in the world. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, at this point, you'd love to try and rally around Doraemon and wherever he goes, you play with him. Whoa. But by absolute madman. Yeah, he's definitely looking there. Not sure what he was hoping to achieve besides kind of scaring Jovi so Kise could get a few auto attacks on the turret there. But you can see Doraemon has kind of realized that he needs to be the one grouping. It's a minute on this Infernal Drake, which would put them one dragon away from Sol. And Skimmy, the only thing worse against playing a, playing against a Fed Varus and a Fed Jace is a Fed Varus and a Fed Jace with Infernal Sol. But let's take a look at this play again. You can see Tien has just TP'd out here, right? Ground Zero probably preoccupied with the Rift Herald exploits end up going down. It's actually the Rift Herald that enables Schoenfire to get out of harm's way there. <laughs> We've certainly seen a few clips on um, on the social media where players have used that as a get out of uh, jail free card, right? So crazy. They're not even interrupted on that channel, so you can just run away and um, yeah, utilize those nine lives. Either way, though, it's uh, still Grand Zero very much in control. They've retained that 5k gold lead for the last portion, or the last passage of play, really. And as you quite rightly point out, two dragons to the name and Infernal Soul to play for, and the next dragon up in 10. Next dragon's up in 10. Jovi's TP will just be ticking available as that starts to spawn, and you can see... Oh! Oh! Well, I don't think they're fighting dragon anymore, Skimmy. But that's the brutal thing. You can say, sure, like a, a Zin can stand in front and say, here's my ultimate, but that's not a win wall. We're not playing Yasuo. That's a long quarter, and that's rough. So, yeah, it's not the Jace, it's the Varus, it's not them on their own. It's them coming together and just deleting somebody off the map in a heartbeat. And I think Schoenfire can posture and stand here without a real care in the world. Tien flashing in, hits the clappy hands, and bounces all around. And I tell you what, they'll be having a whole bunch of fun, but it's a major headache in the side here for Iron. They've already lost three. There goes four. And with Doraemon down, there is no damage. There's no damage left, but there's plenty for Ground Zero still remaining. They're going to round the last remaining members of Iron here. Go, there goes Kise. <laughs> to the skies. And he comes crashing down to delete them. There yes. is the double. There is the ace. And this is looking like Ground Zero already thinking about game two. Yeah, game two has to be what you're considering at this point. You can see they feel so desperate on that mid wave. They feel like they need to contest. Jovi trying to bait as a minion, but there is simply too much poke. Gets revealed by that shock blast, and the second TN jumps in, it is all over. Certainly yeah, it's too easy for him, even with the repositioning of that flash. They're all clumped up to give out Pop Blossom. It just wasn't enough. Simply not enough. All they can do is try to run away, but the 
These burn slums won't even do anything at the end of the day. You can see Ground Zero also pick up that Infernal Dragon, putting themselves five minutes away from almost an auto win with the composition that they have built for themselves. So now it remains to be seen what will be done about this Baron. You can see that in a situation where Ground Zero are just standing around the area, they do have enough damage to force the rest of Ion away. So it's going to take a pretty concerted effort from these red side players to actually get in and to actually thwart any Baron attempt. What I'm curious about the Baron, because obviously they have a phenomenal poking comp, but maybe not the best uptime to try and DPS the Baron very, very quickly. And also in that same vein, if there was going to be any kind of contest from Ion, where would they decide to utilize that damage? Would you just be chucking that across the water, try and zone them out? Or would you just catch them in a side lane and say, forget about the Baron, that's the only way we lose this game. So let's just mog you in this fashion no instead. Way. Don't tell me Joby runs away. Here's Ben B. Cheeky little kill still, doesn't connect. Pop Blossom goes out, bounce up once, bounce up twice. But you're still dead all the same. Hexflash comes in, gets feared, and gets knocked up as well. And it may just once again be one of those slow, painful deaths, especially when Ben V and Schoen are involved, but they say we're not even interested anymore. Let's split push with a Varus. Yeah, this Varus can just do whatever he wants in this mid lane now. And you can see off the back end of that play, TN uses the TP top as well, so not giving anything. <laughs> they finished to, uh, well, they returned to finish what they started, I should say. I mean, it's just unending at this point. I don't even know what Iron can considerably do. Like, you can't really leave your base without knowing you're under a lot of pressure. Yeah, the answer is not really much at this stage, right? Every side of the map that Ground Zero moved towards, they just have too many fed members. If either this Varus or a Jace are in any lane, any fight even, there's just no way that Iron can walk up. So at this point, it's really on Ground Zero to take the Baron, make sure it's not a 50-50, and close out this game. 0-6 in the bot lane, 0-6 in your jungle. There is no late game insurance, there is no contesting ability, and I think uh, Ground Zero are well aware of it, but showing a fair bit of respect by making sure they Play it as safely as they can. Attend to the side lanes first and foremost. Get the pick. Deny the vision. And really uh, look to try and put a bow on things. That's what I have loved to see from, you know, our top teams in recent weeks is their discipline towards closing out games, right? There's no haphazard barons. There's no random flips on soul points. They are very measured and making sure they're playing with the appropriate waves. And I think that kind of just represents how much experience we've had come back into the league, you know, players like TN, players like Shurnfly, obviously who's been in the LCO for a while, but these are players who've been around for a while and TN can stand around for, you know, as long as he wants really with how tanky he is. He certainly can. And they uh, caught me even off guard there, Max. I mean, you're yeah. looking at a bit of desperation on Talimus as an equalizer with no CC, no guaranteed damage. They are your only two members, your two AP forces with the two items complete. That has to connect, that has to work. Yeah, Duranimal just has to flash, right? He's so scared of any potential CC hitting him. He knows he will go down. But this is simply the process, right? You can see, I don't have two members towards this bot side. I don't think there's any reasonable way for them to get towards this Baron. Grand Zero can acknowledge that and take this objective for free. Yep, out of sight, out of mind. I don't think even if they could see the Baron, they'd be interested in taking it because they would just lose that battle. 10k gold lead now. It's been building, it's been brewing, and finally it's come to a head here as that Baron will balloon the gold lead even further. And with uh, two lanes in particular, both bot and mid, ready to exploit, inhibitors are next on the chopping block. Yeah, and looking at the items of Ground Zero now, you can see three items, three and a half items really for Lemus, plus the completed Man Immune just about to tick over as well. Jace in a very similar position. So even just comparing these two roles by themselves, there's almost three items of difference in those departments. And obviously there's Jin Zhao sitting on this Titanic Hydra. This is the squishiest Jin Zhao I think I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you're talking about um, Lethality dropping off by the mid game. Uh, it's, it's still true damage is what it feels like to me. One yeah. bit of uh, shot blast or a piercing arrow and somebody's lost, um, you know, half the health bar here. So very hard for them to staunch things up and very hard for them to try and do what we wanted to see from the draft, right? Flank, utilize the Zaya, uh, utilize the Rakan rather, and hit them with that Zen too. So uh, they're going to have to bear the burden of uh, watching their base crumble around them and see if there's anything left in the tank. Yeah, Doraemon and Foreigner, neither of those members are actually here. They're on the opposite side of the map, so basically just a free bot lane inhibitor. Speaking of flanks, there are wards in the bot side jungle. You can see the pings are coming down now, but there's really all they're really all on vision, right? So the second a TP is channeled, Ground Zero will be able to spot that out. It's gonna come down to a desperation play, but the question is when do you actually pull that trigger? 
If it's not now, do you wait for the dragon? Because the dragon has spawned. Chain of Corruption just barely missing. Fancy Sweep from Rona. Flash ult. There we go. Looking for the kill to Shun. They can't get Lemus. Because he flashed. He read the play oh. beautifully. And he is the fine too. Showcasing what a 10k gold he really looks like. Out goes the Featherstorm. Can he get the Blade Caller? Or is he dead before it even happens? That seemingly is the case. It's a perfect game as they all survive. And Granza will look to wrap this one up in under 26 minutes. It felt like it was inevitable from the moment this game started. Bot lane has been our narrative this entire week, and this game was no different. Lemus and Benvy putting on an absolute clinic, crushing Ion, giving them no room to come back in game one.